Okay, so here I am in my parents' house back in Chilliwack. Flew back from Ontario two days ago. And so far I've gotten off to a really distracted start, which is really frustrating because I wanted to hit the ground running. Uh, my stuff is kind of all over my parents' house right now. I'm going to clean all of this up later. I can explain why I am at my parents' house. And I'm actually gonna be at my parents' house for most of the new year. The reason for this is, is I'm getting married in April, which is incredibly exciting. And I'm transitioning out of the work that I was doing in Vancouver. So I'm kind of in this in-between stage and my van that I've been living in in Vancouver isn't fully outfitted to work out of. I'm capable to live in that van and I have been for almost the past half a year, but I have not been capable to work out of it because you know I need lots of power and I need hard drive space. So that's the struggle I'm up against and why I'm moving back in with my parents uh, before I get married. So that way I can have the studio space that's outside of Vancouver and I can try work on this transition a little better. Well, it's been a bit of an uneventful week. I'm here at my parents' house, still trying to get my studio area set up and things are still a mess and things have been going pretty slow as I try to get things underway. But I'm gonna try make an LED light this morning because I'm gonna record a Q&A this morning for today's vlog. So I have a strip of LED lights and a few other things. And I'm gonna try and make a quick and dirty light. <music> the ring light but unfortunately I made it too big first of all so it makes this massive ring in my eyes which I don't want and the color's bad and so I can't match it with any of the other lights in here and it just looks weird I'm trying to come up with a different option now just because I need some basic lighting down here so I can record you know the Q&A and some other tutorials and stuff and I don't want it to look like suck I'm trying to just use what I already have because I don't really want to go out and buy something right now because I don't really have like funds to do that so trying to make it work and uh <laughs> Hopefully I get something together. Yesterday I reached out on Instagram and asked you guys if you had any questions and thankfully you did. So now I'm gonna try and answer some of them. So Jake asks, for an all purpose camera, what would you recommend? What video editing program would you recommend also? Right now I'm personally looking at the Sony RX100 series. I think they're up to Mark IV, I believe they call it. And those are just fantastic compact cameras that perform amazingly. And so those to me seem like a great all around camera. Also, like a camera like a GH4 is pretty great for all-around stuff, but really comes down to what you're looking for and what you need out of a camera. The Sony RX100 series, though, looks pretty impressive for small, compact, easy-to-use cameras. For editing programs, I edit in Premiere Pro I have for years, and I think it's fantastic. Freddie asks, how do you pursue your passion while working to pay bills? 
man, this is a massive question and I could answer it forever. What it comes down to is what are you willing to say no to? Because if you're using your passion to pay your bills, you can't start with your passion and expect it to start paying your bills right away. One of the things you have to do is, you know, work a job if that's the situation that you're in. If you want your passion to be going at the same time, you know, you're going to have to make room for that. And that comes down to what are you willing to say no to? Because if you're willing to cut things out of your life, both time and comfort wise, you can live off a of very low income. If you just lower your standard of living and then you have more time to make room for this passion and you can grow your passion on the side and you don't have to compromise on your passion because it really sucks when you're using your passion to try and make an income and you're having to cut corners and you're taking on projects you don't want to, that's not a good feeling and it's not gonna be your passion for long if you pursue that route. I would recommend work a job that's sustainable, lower your standard of living, say no to a lot of things and just focus on your passion and make as many things as possible. That's kind of how I've bounced it and I'm making this transition where I'm working less on the part-time things and moving over more towards the passion things. But that transition takes a long time. And in order to make that transition happen more smoothly, you really have to be using your passion for what your passion actually is. And if you're business savvy, you really can leverage that to create a lifestyle or a business for yourself that helps you use your passion to make a living. And that's kind of the process I'm in right now. Chris asks, personal goals you have achieved and ones you hope to achieve, film related or not? Let me grab something. So in this book here, at the beginning of the summer, I wrote out, you know, what are some of my goals? And okay, so here's some of the goals that I had going into this summer, kind of for the next two or so years. Run my own company with two plus employees, bring in $50,000 for a job, shoot aerial footage, film a passion project, screen one of my passion projects, get a Vimeo staff pick. It's really exciting because this summer I actually got to check like four of these off, which I didn't fully expect. But shot some aerial footage, which was rad, filmed a passion project, got to screen that passion project, and also got a Vimeo staff pick. And those for me were just goals. You know, I just wanted to see if I could make them, and I did. Rylan asks, in terms of the way you filmed and edited Untethered, who are some of your inspirations, and what was the biggest obstacle when making it? Someone else lower down asked who my biggest film inspirations are as well. So I'll answer that first. My biggest inspiration is just in film in general is one filmmaker named Sebastian Montaz, incredible filmmaker, does really great documentary style content with very minimal setups. I just really respect his work as I've seen him progress over the past five years. So Sebastian Montaz is like one of my favorite filmmakers as far as outdoor adventure stuff goes. Another filmmaker that is right at the top for me is Renan Ozturk. He's just a phenomenal outdoor adventure storyteller as well. He works with Camp 4 Collective. Their work is simply amazing. And I really look up to that whole group in general. So Renan and Sebastian are kind of my favorite filmmakers right now. And I really look up to the work that they do. As far as did I emulate any of their styles in Untethered? I don't feel as though I directly referenced or tried to emulate anybody. I'm sure you can see impressions of their work in the way that I did it, but I felt as though I kind of just did what made sense to me at the time. And so even as I was filming it and the way that I ended up editing it, I just kind of did what I felt my voice was for telling that story. But inevitably some of my work is inspired by some of these filmmakers that I really look up to. So yeah, I think just making it work was the biggest obstacle because I made this while working almost full time. And so I was working like two full time things, one trying to serve the other. And there's just a lot going on and it was really hard. I had to say no to so many things, which on the other side of it is really rewarding, but I also had to say no to so much. And I think that was the, one of the biggest obstacles for me is I, you just have to say no to literally everything. No to friends, no to hanging out, no to food. No. I stayed in a studio like 12 hours a day, days on end. I don't enjoy that. I love being outside, but saying no to certain things for a time was what helped me actually make this film and be able to actually financially be able to because I paid for it. So that's one of the biggest obstacles. Jared asks, what is your time-lapse setup? For cameras, I use my iPhone with the Lapsit Pro app. And for DSLRs, I use my Canon 60D. Those are kind of like the only two picture taking devices that I own. And so I use them. Uh, for motion control equipment, I have a Kessler Crane second shooter that I mount onto a Kessler Crane Stealth Dolly. Phenomenal equipment, some of the best motion control stuff out there. And I'm really just scratching the surface of what's possible with that stuff. And I'm really excited to do more motion control stuff in 2016. Marley asks, what's your favorite camera to film with? 
and your favorite piece of equipment. My favorite piece of equipment by far is a monopod. I've talked about this before in blog posts. I can use it in so many versatile ways and I actually hope to just be creating like a mini tutorial of all the things that I can do with a monopod. So that's definitely my favorite piece of equipment as far as being able to run and gun shoot. Next up to that definitely has to be my slider equipment because it's, it's awesome and it slides and it's automatic and cool. What is my favorite camera? That is a challenging one. I can pull the card, it comes down to what you're shooting, but the cameras that I'm really loving right now are all coming from Sony, surprisingly. They have these amazing low light DSLRs, which I'm sure you've heard of. Another phenomenal camera in their lineup though is the FS5 and it's definitely set up more for filmmaking. And I hope, I hope I can get my hands on one of those in this spring because it's just a phenomenal camera. And you know, my 6CD, it's, yeah, it's aging. <laughs> So my last question is from Brady and he's essentially asking, how am I taking advantage of the small barrier between my audience on channels like Vimeo and YouTube? I used to only use YouTube for my best, most finished projects, which you can actually go through my YouTube history and see kind of how my video quality has progressed over the past couple of years. But essentially I've been using YouTube as just an open dialogue between me and you. And that could be as quick as, you know, a video that I've just shot with my phone as I'm talking to you, or it could be something that's a little more edited like the vlogs, or, you know, maybe I will release some of my higher quality content on here. Because frankly, when stuff's on YouTube, it's easier found than other places. But I love Vimeo. I love the community that's on Vimeo, specifically amongst the other filmmakers. And I personally use Vimeo more of like a portfolio for me. And so that's kind of where my best, most polished work goes. And that's where I point people to if they're wanting to see what I'm capable of as a storyteller. Thank you so much for the questions. Those were really great questions. I enjoyed answering them. Hopefully you enjoyed listening to them. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Left Coast Life. Great having you along. Remember guys, life is better when you make stuff.